back to No Reform. My name is Danny. I'm AJ. And today we're going to talk about Inauguration 2021. 2020, yes. Uh, we'll reflect on Trump's uh, four years. Four years, accomplishments. Yes. Quote, unquote. And uh, and then we'll take it over all the way to Inauguration Day. Sounds good. It's all right. All so right, so... if. If we were going to list his major accomplishments, according to his supporters, what would they be? Well, we're going to have to list all the winnings that we had in the last four years. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, okay, what would they are consider? you tired of winning? The question is. That, that's the question for our mega yeah. viewers. Are yeah. you tired of winning? Or... Well, or could there have been a little more winning? <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, okay, so if we look back, okay, what, what did he get accomplished, all right? He, so the tax cuts? Yeah, he cut the taxes for his uh, for himself and his family, I guess. Yeah. Now, this, this is the from the perspective of his supporters, Yeah. what they would consider wins, right? Okay, so he began construction on the border wall. He, yeah. yeah, he put a Muslim ban. Muslim ban, right? Yeah. He... Uh, DACA. What he tried to He canceled DACA. Yeah. Um okay. also he um pulled the United States out of climate accord. Mm-hmm. Paris, Paris out of the climate. WHO. Yeah. Um he started a trade war with China. Yeah. Yeah. Looks yeah. like they were pretty supportive of that. Yeah. They were uh, actually we won that war, didn't we? Oh, sure. I yeah. I mean, I th- now the trade deficit is actually more than it was when he <laughs> took office. But yeah, <laughs> I suppose that's winning. So, <laughs> yeah. is it more winning? It? Well, it's it's winning on someone's side anyway. Yeah. There, uh-huh. There's always two sides to every equation here. So, um, so that did affect the farmers negatively, right? Yeah, and uh, you know we helped them by providing some money. Subsidies. Subsidies. And yeah. uh, we also provided, uh, you know, we actually just bought their stuff, basically. Yeah. Taxpayers bought it. Uh, would it's that be considered government? No, I don't want to say that. Uh, uh, that's a, <laughs> it's not government handout, actually. No, it's not government no. handout. <laughs> it's something else. <laughs> it, we'll call it something else, um, uh, just to spare them. So, Yeah. That uh, what, let's see what else. Um, he didn't start new wars. Yeah, I mean that's that's the best thing that he, you know, he didn't do it was he start any new wars. But and he continued the Obama era era kind of conflicts, right? Yeah, Bush and Obama. Yeah, maybe yeah. expanded in some places. I think the drone strike program was expanded, and that. Yeah, he continued that. If it didn't expand, he he kept it. Okay. Because uh, we were bombing Muslims, you yeah. know, but the more important brown people. Yeah, so, so definitely it's a win yeah. for supporters. Um, let's see what else. What 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 else sticks out? So we had four years. Uh, he did he did get three judges appointed to the Supreme Court. He right. got three uh, judges to relig- religious zealots. One rapist. I mean, sorry, <laughs> uh, the beer drinking guy. <laughs> he likes to party, AJ, okay? He likes to cut loose sometimes. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Um, I mean, one folksy guy. Yeah, one folksy guy with uh, uh, credentials longer than my arm. Yeah. But he's somehow folksy. He's yeah. folksy, and <laughs> another one was uh, didn't believe in birth control. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, one was a handmaid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what they called it, right? A handmaid? <laughs> so Republicans have nominated two rapists, basically. Yeah. Yeah, Clarence Thomas, back in the nineties. Yeah, and the Kavanaugh guy. So uh, you know, certainly uh, not convicted the, yeah. rapist. These are not convicted. I mean, these are alleged. Uh, yeah, alleged rapist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's something. Uh, and this is the family values party. That's true. Religious party. Well, I think if if they had had families with their victims, they'd probably raise the children and <laughs> 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 after their encounters. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, pretty big deals there. All right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, deregulation on a massive scale. Um, expanded drilling. I, I think that's. Mm. He approved the Keystone pipeline also. Mm-hmm. 
He oh. uh, allowed uh, drilling in Arctic. Okay. And, and uh, also in the uh, Gulf, I guess. What about Middle East, overseas? What, what, what do we have? Did he, uh, th- didn't he create a peace agreement between Israel and somebody else? <laughs> uh, it was basically a promissory note. <laughs> I mean, it didn't have anything. It's, so, it's sort of a, like uh, when you give your girlfriend a promissory ring. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, nice. that's that's what it was. Okay, good, yeah, good. It, it it doesn't have any type of meaning, M- as but it makes you feel good anyway. Yeah, I mean, most of uh, Trump's overtures have no meaning, but yeah, that's fine. All right, what else do you have? Well, um, we know that he started his four years ago. He started his presidency with the the biggest lie, which uh, was that his crowd was the biggest. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, we know that we know that from pictures that it wasn't demonstrably untrue. Yeah, yeah. I mean it was it was the basically they were telling people that this is how we're gonna govern. Yeah, we are going to tell you lies, and you are going to believe these lies because because we say so. Yeah, just kind of foreshadowing uh, yeah. the, the continuous stream of lies we come out that we come out of the like White House press room, starting with Sean Spicer. Uh, yeah, and he, <laughs> the he, grandfather. <laughs> yeah, he came out and he said, "This is the biggest crowd ever." Period. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> uh, which, which is a pretty incredible statement, considering we did have the images of the previous um, crowd. But you know, this, this was the um, kind of the direction they were going to take. Yeah, I mean, that's the they were previewing right in front of people's eyes and in front of the media, and they didn't challenge. They didn't challenge any of those things. They just let them talk about those things. Yeah, that was kind of a test case, right? Yeah. They're kind of like dipping their toe in the water. Like, what can we get away with? Apparently, everything. Apparently. Now, it took the media months before they'd actually call things lies. I mean, they would say untruths or maybe, what, mistruths or, uh, I don't know, misspoken words. They would use everything Alternative but Alternative facts. Yeah, and, uh, Kellyanne Conway, yeah. she... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> she coined a new term, right? Um, I mean, even the media was saying uh, these are untrue statements. Well, isn't that a, we have a term for that? We it's do. called a lie. We do in a much more simpler <laughs> yeah. way of saying it. It's a lie, right? It's a lie. So then Trump starts saying fake news, right? Yeah, I and mean, that's why term you know label them as fake news because. They fact I mean, checked. Oh yeah, I mean these were fake news. Yeah, they were not fact checking these people or Trump uh, when they should be. Yeah, I mean it took months. Yeah, and, and a lot of the well, you hear this uh, a lot from other people from other um, from news organizations. They don't want to challenge too much, or else they'll lose that uh, that person. They'll stop coming on the show, right? Yeah. So they don't push back like they should, and I think once they realize that. It was just going to be too. I mean, overwhelmed by these lies, they had to start speaking up. It did take a while, a long while. I think uh, there were some standouts. I mean, Jake Tapper once in a while would say something. You know. uh, the last month of the administration, Chuck Todd said something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sleepy eye Chuck. Uh, <laughs> he he did challenge. Uh, uh, what's his name? Johnson. Yeah, Ron Johnson. Ron Johnson. That you know he. he well, you're not going to come on this show and. Tell all these lies. Yeah, like well, what took you so long? <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> he was, you know, <laughs> he was uh, counting his money from his yeah, massive I mean, salary. Yeah. I don't know, but they, they let Trump fanning, you know, fan out all these hate. You know, Mexicans are rapists. Mm, yeah. uh, Muslims are all terrorists. Pretty much. Um, I mean, black people are un-American. Black people are un-American <laughs> for kneel. kneeling, yeah, yeah <laughs> for a song. <laughs> it's interesting how they let that, yeah. all that go, and they were never held to account. Uh, no price was ever paid. No, no supporters lost. In fact, they gained. Well, we said it before. They gained supporters over yeah, the, I mean, the he, last four years. Yeah, he, uh, we know from the last election that he gained support. Almost ten million people, you know, voted for him. More. More yeah. than last time. More than last time. So there was clearly so an audience, a receptive audience. There was yeah. um, he appealed to a large, you know, a swath of voters yep. everywhere from Hispanic, uh, white, and also especially the illegal votes because we know, yeah, 
Last time he lost the election by three million, mm-hmm. and this time he lost by five. So he was able to increase the illegal vote <laughs> by two million. <laughs> well done, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that was the real. See, what I think what QAnon didn't understand is that his real goal wasn't try to, to take out pedophiles. He's, he's devil worshiping pedophiles. It was to increase the illegal vote in the country. Yeah, and they I mean, just yeah. misunderstood the actual goal. But now that we know what it is, it's very clear. I mean, they, they thought that he's going to build the wall and all these people are not going to be here. And, sure. And uh, Instead, he's probably building tunnels. Yeah, he's... <laughs> <laughs> under the wall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, this was a... Uh, and, uh, I mean, this was so great that, you know, Bush... at. Biden's inauguration was looked so happy. Yeah, he looked. Yeah, he did look happy, didn't I he? I mean, it wasn't because Biden got elected. I think it was because he was looking better and better every day. Like Einstein compared to Trump. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, look, it's obviously when you hold them up to each yeah. other. Yeah, Bush clearly is the better person, right? I mean, it's. I mean, he he's he's looking like a saint right now. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, well, what's funny because he did, he, he did oversee the invasion of Iraq, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, he started to one illegal war for sure. Yep. Uh, killed. I mean, at least two hundred thousand is by UN numbers. At you least. know that Iraqis were killed, but John we know Talk it's probably yeah, yep. yeah, it's probably more. I mean, but uh, even so, given all that, yeah, he still looks again like a saint compared to Trump. So. I mean, I think he's safe to come out of his bunker and stop painting. Well, you know, <laughs> you have to have an outlet. That's, I mean, uh, yeah. it's like a, having PTSD. You've got to find some way to, after all the people that he got killed. Yeah. But either way, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, these are all the winnings that we had. Uh, he lost the House mm-hmm. twice. Twice. Lost Senate once. Lost popular vote twice. twice. One by increasing the number. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that, huh? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, one of the losingest presidents in history. Huh? So, <laughs> are we safe to call him the biggest loser? Well, he didn't lose the weight. I mean, no, no, he, that's, where, that's where he did gain. Yeah. He made some gains in there in that, <laughs> in that area. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that's probably fair to say. But I do feel like I lost 200. 75 pounds, though. Do you? To you today, <laughs> I feel very light. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I had to float in this room, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel a little lighter in America today, I would imagine, for many people. Um, I mean, uh, this, his presence creates such a dark cloud. It's almost suffocating, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we, we have Joe Biden in there, and, you know, wasn't our choice, obviously. Wasn't our number one pick, but... Uh, but we'll take it right now. Yeah, you listened to his inauguration speech, and it was, yeah, it was you know a unifying speech as much as that matters. But um, it was conciliatory in a in a way that you'd never hear from Trump. You know where you had Trump talking about you know withholding funds from blue states. You know you, there was nothing like that in the Biden speech. So I don't know. We'll you know we'll see what happens with that. But I mean, he didn't try to divide the country. No, not not on the first not, day. Not from the start. <laughs> uh, they didn't say, okay, I'm going to do these things for these people, but not for these people. Yeah. Or, um, you know, call people names right away. Not right away. Yeah. I don't suspect uh, he will either. I don't think he's going to, but. Uh, he's too much of a politician. Yeah. For that sort of thing. But he's more polished. Yeah. He knows how to do the job. Well, you've been in Congress 50 years. <laughs> what it was, <laughs> however long it's been, you. Uh, well, he arrived uh, as the youngest senator, hmm. and uh, now he arrived as the oldest president. So, oh well, he's just <laughs> across so the spectrum, he, huh? So he he has covered both <laughs> sides. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so what has he done, right? So he takes office and uh, he signs seventeen executive orders. Undoing much of what Trump has done up to this point. Um, we've entered the Paris Climate Accords. Or we're going to. Yeah. Yeah. We 
rejoin right away. Mm-hmm. Um, so, which his- Ted Cruz criticized. Yeah, on what Twitter. did he say about that? I'm sure he said something pretty insightful. Uh, yeah, he said uh, Biden worries about people in Paris more than jobs over here in America. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty important to, r- to yeah, recognize I that. Mean, it, it is important from a fake cowboy wearing Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> fake because, you know, the the meeting convened in Paris. Yeah. Uh, that's It's not, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, just because it's named Paris doesn't mean it's just for the people Parisians. in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean that. But it's okay. Because uh, I, th- I think he's counting on his followers being that stupid. So Yeah, I mean. Air, there is no red air or blue air. Is only one air. Yep. And if you don't have air, you don't have any jobs. We must all partake from the same air, <laughs> right? And we don't. You're right. There's no air. There's no breathing. Yeah. No jobs. No economy. So no economy there. Yeah. Uh, foolish tweet, of course. Um, I think again, David Frum tweeted about that as well. He tweeted like, uh, talked about the Geneva Conventions. It wasn't just for them. It's for, like, oh, we only care about Geneva. Or Switzerland, right? Only yeah. the Swiss. No, it's for everybody. We all we're all affected by war crimes. So, yeah. I mean, uh, so he's uh, he's going to reauthorize DACA. Yep. I think he signed that executive order also. Yep. Uh, halt uh, the building of the border wall. Right? Did we talked about that already. Yeah, I mean, we need cements for company uh, buildings over here, not not for the wall, man. Infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure. I think it's pretty important. Uh, I think we should use that. To maybe fix our highways. Hey, there's an idea. Yeah. Oh. Um, just some work on on uh, LGBT uh, as far as adoption rights. Um, I think agencies can't turn people away if they're same sex. Uh, that's uh, Trump's last executive order that he signed. Mm-hmm. I think that was he, it. Lasted 24 hours, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of Trump, uh, so one of the things he promised about draining the swamp was to uh, prevent people from lobbying within five years of serving. Yeah, I think he and then overturned he re- that, too. He overturned that, I think, the last yeah. day. So yeah. so much for that, folks. Drain that swamp, huh? Yeah, I mean, he... F- well, we know he didn't drain it. We know that. Yeah, I mean, he, he probably increased it. <laughs> yeah, there's no question about that. <laughs> it uh, expanded the territory. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to get rid of... Uh, our Treasury Secretary for sure, Mnuchin. Yeah, Mnuchin. Uh, Munchkin. Munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also our uh, Secretary of State, what's his name? Pompeo. Pompeo. Yeah. Who thinks Two of the worst people. Multiculturalism is a, uh, it's a bad thing, right? Yeah. We don't want that for this country. That's un-American. Who said uh, Iran is uh, joining uh, Al-Qaeda? Sure it is. <laughs> I mean, this is coming from our Secretary of State who do not understand the basic understanding of Al-Qaeda and Iran. Nope. These are two rivals. Yep. I mean, these are not even the same, not even the same religious sect. Mm-mm. I mean, Al-Qaeda is a Sunni sect. Mm-hmm. Iran is a is a Shia sect. So, I mean, these these are rivals. These are not... Uh, no. They're, they're not the done. only thing that's common in them is is maybe there are enemies of you know royal family in Saudi Arabia. Also enemies of the U.S. or well, they don't like the U.S. very much. Well, <laughs> not Iran doesn't like U.S. because of yeah, I know. I mean because of what they have done. Sure. Not Iran doesn't like U.S. because of you know the people. Not, it's mean, not could, because of that. How could they dislike us? I mean, yeah. I mean, we we. We try to bring democracy to them, right? Yeah. Didn't One we? podcast at a time. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring, uh, yeah. So, yeah, look, Pompeo is f- clearly full of it, and I think it's just propaganda. It's all it ever was. But, yeah, now he's out, and we'll see We'll see who comes in next. I mean, they yeah. can repair the damage that they've done, but it's hard to say. Unpredictable, Aaron. Yeah. So, he's done that. COVID relief, uh, there was a moratorium on evictions, and I believe uh, student debt payments as well. Yes, he, uh, I think he put a stop, hold on him until September or October. I think that's right. 
Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, across the board, some pretty good executive orders, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's he, a good uh, step. I think he also sent $1.9 trillion COVID relief stimulus package already to Congress on first day. Okay, good. Well, we'll see. And also the immigration bill, overhaul of the immigration bill. Yeah, so he has plans for hmm. uh, the 11 million people that are here illegally. Oh, a path, path citizenship? Is, yeah, it's it's an eight-year plan. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, well, I'm sure there'll be some opposition there on both sides. On uh, I mean, on both counts. Uh, Josh Hawley is already screaming. Yeah, already. Yeah. Uh, I did watch this uh, today. I watched a part of the confirmation hearing for Pete Buttigieg for transportation. Okay. And my John Thune, of course, brought up you know, how are we going to pay for it? How are we going? Now he's there talking about paying for things, about the deficit and the debt. And that was one of the first things he asked. He goes, "Yeah, we have all these plans to you know develop transportation infrastructure, and but we've got to ask, and how we how do we pay for it? How do we pay for it?" Uh, that's their favorite question. When Every Democrats are in time. power. Yeah. Once. Uh, <laughs> The other side is in power. They're worried about debt. But yeah. when they're in power, they party like drunken s- sailors. That's it. Ben says. <laughs> 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 Th- then they're asking, how much money can we borrow? Yeah. How much money can we give away, right? I mean, what did uh, Trump do? Didn't he increase uh, by $10 trillion? Uh, the debt? I think it was around 7 to $8 trillion. Seven to eight, okay. Seven to eight, seven to eight. Yeah, I think it's something like twenty-seven or twenty-eight trillion now, somewhere around there. Uh, but th- again, that's one term. Yeah. I mean, Obama did something like almost ten trillion in two terms. And, and he inherited a, a a very bad economy. It was a disaster. I mean, it's <laughs> no question about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, we were in uh, pretty much in a ditch at that time. Yeah, yeah, just digging our way out. Yeah. So there was an excuse. I mean, was, look. You can and debate he, the economics, but yeah, and this guy did it in prosperous time. That's I right. Mean, when they were, you know, all time high in the employment rate, stock market all time highs. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There was really no excuse. Um, just poor management, and you know, giveaways. To the tax cuts. Yeah. The tax cuts. They always said that they're those tax cuts are gonna pay for themselves by because we're gonna have so much, so much business activity that. Mm-hmm. They will pay for itself. Economic growth will pay yeah. for all of it. I mean, it never happened. No. We have tried it since Reagan. It has never happened. It's probably the biggest myth on the Republican side <laughs> on any topic <laughs> is that, you know, <laughs> that the uh, it'll, tax cuts will pay for themselves, right? That's yeah. always what they say. That's their, like, mantra. That's how they meditate. But, you know, the people always believe it. Yeah. And they I keep I voting for these things. I do wonder if they do or not. I don't know if the average citizen cares or not whether the deficits we have deficits or not or what's paid for. I think they just they we have tribes. We yeah, have sides. I mean, yeah, I mean they <laughs> most people don't understand it. No. They don't I mean, know what a deficit is, what a debt is. Yeah. They don't they're not that concerned about it. They just want their people to win at all costs. Even though our side has the popular policies. But it's on the, it's on the wrong side. It's if it were on oh the yeah. other side, well, I mean, our side has a problem of not explaining things. Yeah, not I mean, we we it. sound weak all the time. Always begging, hat in hand. I mean, what is Schumer was saying that we may have a fifty-fifty split on the committees. He was. He is saying that that they want to share power with McConnell. Why? Why are we going to share power? We won. We should step on their neck. I mean, sorry. Well. I'm uh, taking that away from <laughs> uh, uh, the Floyd. police, but uh, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah but but your point is well taken, right? Yeah. Well, so we go through all this trouble to win an election. We have massive turnout. Yeah. Everywhere, especially in Georgia. And what do we get for it? What do we have to show for it? We're sharing power. We're going to beg for scraps from McConnell's table. Why are we talking about uh, bipartisanship when? The last 10 years we have spent under McConnell's ass. Yeah. But that's how they play the game. Yeah. They're conciliatory. Democrats are. They don't know how to fight. They need to learn quick. They already forgot how they won in Georgia. I know they did. I mean, they the already, they're already thinking, we're so, so great. No, no, no. It was 
you told the people you're going to give them $2,000 check. That's and now what, the number's down to 1400 do. Yeah. I mean, they, I'll say, so what, what they'll say is, well, oh, no, they already got 600 No, no. You promised 2000 You he said already, it would yeah. be $2,000 check going out. That that's 600 what, came from Trump. Yeah. That's, but that's not what you said. So they're already backing off on that. They're already backing up. you got to so. be careful. I mean, look, I mean, the, the only... <laughs> They, they have to take bold steps, right? The economy is in a bad place. People are suffering. You've got to work on health care. You've got to work on, you know, COVID. You've got to work on, you know, moratoriums for payments for like mortgage payments. These things are pretty important, man. Um, I don't know what their game plan is, if they have one. Maybe they were caught off guard because they didn't plan on winning the Senate. <laughs> and they're like, now what? Now what do we do? They're, they're surprised. It's like when the Coyote uh, finally cut the roadrunner. Now what yeah. do we do? I don't, yeah. I don't know. So they have uh, to get their act I, together. I have no opposition anymore. I don't know how to govern. I don't know how to govern. Well, they well they're out of practice. Um, <laughs> the only, I guess the only like saving grace here is that possibly the filibuster is is not on the table as far as being cut or or you know not being used. I said that you know um, Schumer has not, has said that uh, all options are on the table. So even though McConnell wants him to not use the fili- um, to get rid of the filibuster. Maybe they'll hold on to that, right? Well, you know, option. all options on the table. What is what does that mean anyway? Nothing. I mean, does it mean that you are going to stick with you with your you know with your principles? You are you going to stick with your? Well, we know they're not going to stick with their principles. We know that because we know the principles are very closely aligned. Yeah, with I mean, the de- Republicans. So. Yeah, but you know, as l- at least are you going to stick to what you said? Yeah, you know, in public. That's the question. Yeah. And they have to be held to account if they don't. And that's why we're here. Well, uh, you know, there's houses saying that they will pick up uh, the COVID-19 relief bill early in February. So we have another 10 days to go for that to happen. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe longer. What, what is early February? Like February 14th? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, early February means uh, 29th. <laughs> <laughs> Which is four years from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's reassuring, huh? I'm yeah. sure people can wait that long. So, yeah, time will tell what happens. Yeah. Um, we'll see if they can be pushed one way or the other, but Probably it's not, not looking good so far. Yeah, it's not. Uh, hopefully, they will remember it. Otherwise, they uh, they have a shellacking coming in two years. Yep, which they're already used to, so... <laughs> 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 I mean, which uh, they don't have much of a lead in House or, well, they don't have a lead at all in Senate. No. I mean, they're just at the borderline. Yeah, so. slim margins. Yeah. They're lucky to have what they've got. Yeah. Don't squander it. No. And I hope they can muster up some courage, some uh, cojones, <laughs> and get something done before it's too late. This is like Obama's first two years. You know, I know he had a lot more than they do now, but this is the only chance you're going to get, folks. I mean, you can make something happen now, or that's it. You lose the Senate, or possibly the House, and then, and that's it. There goes the agenda. 